Call the May 12, 2014, USD 350 Board of Education meeting order. Welcome to all our visitors. Welcome. Any additions or changes to the agenda? No, you'll notice one change uh, in the expanded agenda. I'd add one motion in there when we're talking about capital improvements from what I sent you, but the agenda hasn't changed. Okay. Approval of the agenda. Mr. President, I'm going to approve the agenda. The agenda is presented. Second. Moved mm -hmm. and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Consent agenda. There's uh, nothing unusual to report here except the two items that are not normally on the consent agenda. I put these on the consent agenda just because they don't need a lot of discussion. Uh, calendar dates, we approved the calendar uh, some time ago. Um, and just changed two of the early dismissal days due to some activities that kind of interfere with that. Uh, makes it. It's those days we dismiss at 115. Those are on page uh, you know, 34, just those two dates. So this will be approving that calendar. And then the summer camp uh, practice schedule is here. Uh, this would just be approving those dates. And those teams can use those without fees for uh, required of, of others that would use the gym uh, facilities. Mr. President, I'm going to the consent agenda is presented. Second motion. Moving second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried 7 0. <clears throat> Are there any patron comments tonight? Okay. Moving on to the business agenda. First up, approval of the capital improvement project bids. Um, we've got a lot uh, to discuss here. Um, the first part of this uh, capital improvement project is our main building. Um, I'm going to let Clark kind of discuss uh, some of these things and what those, if you can remind us all what the base yeah. bid was compared okay. to everything else. Okay. <clears throat> the base bid uh, on the count, or the first line item up there includes the, I'm going to call it the classroom meanwhile, which is the old library, reworking that doorway entrance and fixing the fire marshal issue there. Page 38 on your supporting documents. Yeah. Then uh, it also includes the moving of the district office from where it is in the high school next to the girls' restroom to the classroom by the entrance there in the elementary wing. And the remodel of, of dividing of that space taking the partition out between the classroom and the teacher workroom and setting that up as an as your as a district office and providing two private office spaces in that area. It also includes the what I'm going to call the full renovation of the elementary restrooms, that's the gutting and removing of the walls, fixtures, finishes, and rebuilding those to meet ADA clearance requirements and redoing those restrooms. It includes reworking the restrooms at the west end of the elementary, the women's restroom there. It's removing the fixtures and the partitions and the finishes and replacing plumbing fixtures, new finishes, and uh, new toilet partitions in that room. Then on the boys' restroom, uh, they're underneath the bleachers in the old gym. Uh, is, I guess the best way to describe it. It's we're removing plumbing fixtures and finishes and replacing the plumbing fixtures, putting in new partitions and new finishes in that restroom. And then going to the high school restroom, it's converting the old district office into a boys restroom that's accessible and reworking the girls restroom to, in similar fashion to what we did in the elementary, removing fixtures, finishes and redoing all those. And then going to the middle school, it includes removing the finishes the fixtures and the partitions and replacing those and that is the base scope of work with the project. The alternate base bid or the base bid essentially allowed the contractor to set his completion time. From when you told him to start or go 
how much time he needed to do it, which he's asked for 120 days for the base bid. I then took a bid to do that same scope of work, but told him he had to have it done by August 15th so that it'd be done for the start of school. And as you see there, it essentially was a $30,000 ad to tighten the time frame to get the work completed. Alternate A1 was to enclose the exterior corridor there uh, on the north side of the outside of the elementary wing and putting a roof and an exterior wall in there and turning that into storage space that the, the district could use. And that was just the enclosure there was the, well, the southern one, which was the low base bidder. His cost to do that alternate was 62800 Then the alternate A2 was the cost to do that storage room, but then add a restroom that could be used that would be accessible off the elementary corridor. And that was, and that, that 97.9 is the total work. So you would either take A1 or A2, you wouldn't take them together, it's one or the other if you decide to take them, you don't have to take them. Then alternate A3 was the total uh, removal of all the fixtures, finishes in the locker room and replacing uh, toilet partitions, plumbing fixtures, reworking the showers to make the showers what I'm going to call single compartmental or private showers and reworking the finishes, redoing the floor and the shower area to make it ADA accessible, and, and yeah, and then simply refinishing the entire locker room. And that was the, uh, again, under Southern was a $283,600 ad. Uh, on the bid form, I asked them to list their HVAC, plumbing, and electrical contractors. These are your major subs. Partly, I wanted to make sure that the guys that the contractor is wanting to use had visited the job site. And both, well, and it appears by the bids that Don Vaughn and Precision were either the only bidders or the lowest bid, and they both, I know, have been at the job site. So they're familiar with the scope of work and what's needed, and that's sort of my, on a remodel job, if somebody doesn't look at it, and I always say, well, I didn't understand that, or it, now, we've told you specifically what the scope of work was. You came out here and looked at it. This is what we're expecting. Uh, the next item there is just a note. We did have two addendums on the project. One, addenda one, was a follow-up after the uh, pre-bid meeting. It was answering the questions at the pre-bid and putting that out. And then addenda two was, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what was in addenda two. Some more questions had come in and it was answering those. <coughs> oh, addenda two was somebody had asked about asbestos in the building and it was we published the asbestos report so that they knew potentially where, if there was any. And that was essentially what it was about. And then both, the final line there was we asked them uh, is to just acknowledge that they furnished the bid bond as required. Questions about any of those pieces? Everybody clear on what each one of those sections is? The other thing on, and I will mention on A3, and this we did this by addenda one based on discussion at the pre-bid, we did say because of scheduling that that alternate A3, if it was accepted, that work had to be done by August 15th so that you had it for the start of school, which I think is shows in that cost because of the tight amount of work that's there is such a tight window. Because we did that was one of those that when I talked with Josh when the pre, during questions at the pre-bid, he mentioned that, that would, there was real no option to let that one slide. It had to get done. Or does it have to get done by then? We don't have anywhere else to put kids. You know, with junior high and high school uh, football season and volleyball season starting, we don't really have another option. Like for those kids, it, like the basement, the locker room. Uh, no, not really. You know, they hang all their football equipment up in there, and uh, there's not room for that uh, in that basement.
I, I didn't see a way around it. Uh, or I'm doing without locker rooms. You know, we have two small locker rooms for the for the junior high. Uh, That's come along. Got two bids. I, there were actually, as you see, there were four contractors that were out looking at it, um, and I had no, and I couldn't get a hold of. Uh, the Brentwood Builders, which is out of Great Bend, uh, the gentleman still hasn't called me back. Uh, Construction Service Bryant, um, they were interested, <coughs> but I think, for, to be honest, I think the amount of work in the short time frame, they were, uh, he just didn't feel like his crews could actually accomplish the work, and so he didn't turn in a bit. Of course, they've done work for us, they're not a bad contractor, but, you know, if, they're, if, if time is an issue, they, they're one of the contractors that tends to prefer not to bid and not to have to deal with the potential fall down, or issues that come up when you can't complete a job that you promised. So. Anything else? Uh, how much more, I mean, what was our original estimate that you guys put? And how much more is this than well, what you thought was going to I, be? I really thought the, the, the base bid would be somewhere between 500 and 550 and it's a little inflated, but we only had one electrician show up at the pre-bid, and I only knew of one mechanical contractor that came out and looked at the job, which with one, and that's pretty much most of this is mechanical, and then there's just a little bit of electrical. That has a reflectance, I think, in that number. If they know they're the only bidder and they add five or ten percent to the bid on five hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of work, you know that's that kind of puts you about where the, you know the, the the bid or the base or the low bid was. I I yeah, it's one of those. I I know there were people that called and inquired about it. There were people that had plans, but they didn't come visit the job and they didn't turn in a bid. So I don't know. You think it was too short a time notice, or do you think if, if the person had them, you know, alone? Well, I think, well, to be honest, them? most of them, to be honest, was looking. There was a couple other jobs. There was a job that bid Thursday, and there's one that bid this week. And those were both, one was $4 million and one was like $5 million. They went after a bigger job with a potential one that didn't have quite as tight time frame. It's more lucrative, but I think was their feeling. There, there are people that are looking for work, but there are, again, there are certain types of jobs. If you're located just far enough out, it's hard to justify that hour and 40 minutes of drive time for, you know, on the mechanical side or plumbing side, if this is a $600,000 contract and it's half to two-thirds of 350000 is the plumbing, that's not a bad job, but if I can go the same hour or the same distance up at 135 to a job that the plumbing contract was a million and a half, mm -hmm. I'm going to take that. And, you know, I can't, unfortunately I couldn't control what the other projects that were bidding. We tried to, and I did shift our bid date the two days from where we talked about because I didn't want it to bid the same day as the others. I'm afraid if I had bid it on Thursday, we wouldn't have any of them bid it. Because I do know, uh, Regeer and Sutherland bid the other job that, that bid Thursday. Uh, they didn't go after it as competitively as they did this one. <coughs> is that Sutherland or the other great man? Or is that Sutherland? No, Sutherland is out of Wichita. Wichita. Yeah, they're out of. And Regeer is out of Nathan. Construction Service Bryant was, is out of Wichita, and then uh, Brent Woods is out of Great Bend. And Don Vaughn is out of where? Don Vaughn is out of Wichita. Wichita. And uh, Precision Electric, I think it is. I'm not sure where they were out of. I, I don't think they gave me a card, so I didn't think to ask Ramona when, where she sent plans to them. <coughs> but I know Precision's had plans since it came out. Uh, So I was pretty disappointed that the numbers came in so high, uh, uh, for whatever reason that is what it is now. Uh, 
We published a maximum of 955,000 to include the heating and air conditioning here at the library and uh, and our improvements at the main building. <coughs> it, you know, if you include the alternate base bed, do the eight restrooms in the office in that classroom and the locker room areas, you know, that's that's most of it right there. That doesn't leave any room for HVAC system here. I think the locker rooms are they need attention. Uh, um, yeah, and and I will mention that if you elect to go and uh, award a contract to Southern One, they have called me and noted that because of how things were bid and things were turned in, there might be room to trim a little money out of that on approving suppliers and vendors that weren't pre-approved, that which we require them to do before the bid. He actually had some guys turn in a bid the last day that didn't get pre-approved. I'm not sure how much money that would be. He just mentioned that there's some variances in some of those. That, and I told him that I would share it with you, but we awarded on what we bid, and then we can sit down and, and see what we want to do from there. Okay. So even after we approve a, a bid, there's room there, after, there's room after because, the contract. Yeah, because one of the things is we haven't approved the final color selection on the floor. Right. And we know what we want to use. Well, we may, if he can come up and say, well, gee, manufacturer XYZ, which we weren't familiar with, can provide the same product in a color that actually you want, <laughs> then you have them say, yeah, we want to use that, and that could save you $10,000. I don't know that would happen, but I mean, that's, and you're allowed, and we tell them that typically you reserve the right to, if they can, and we are willing to look at substitutions, but I always tell when it comes bid day, you must submit them 10 days before so all the bidders have a fair opportunity to check to see if that actually helps them or not, <coughs> instead of just bidding the substitution. And I know uh, Tim Sutherland, who actually works for Sutherland, he's bid enough of our work. He didn't use those substitutes when he bid his, put his number in. He used the higher priced materials because he knew we're kind of a stickler. It's not fair to others if we don't hold them to what we asked for. But it also, if, if we're in a money issue, there's room to negotiate. I wonder what the difference is between the Regeer and the Southern one, the alternate A and... I will tell you, t uh, the Southern one, part of his, I think, is he's padded because he did not get a roofer to give him a number on putting the roof on that. Uh, storage edition, so he wagged it, uh, and I'm sure, and the problem is it's not a large enough area that you're going to pay a premium to bring a roofer out just for that small area, and I think he, he put a pretty good pad in to do that. Regeer very well may have had it, somebody give them a number for that. And you've worked with both these companies? Yes. Looking at all of our options, I, I we could do the, the base and the locker rooms, but that would leave out the HVAC system here. I worry doing that, you know, this system goes down, which it has, we pay to repair it. Uh, you know, we'd be stuck paying cash for that that we really don't have. Uh, so my recommendation is to go with that alternate base bid the alternates, that's the storage area and the toilet, I don't think for the money that's worth doing at this time uh, for what we're going to get out of it. Uh, that air, that small area I don't think is worth pursuing the way it is now. Um, the difference between the base and the alternate base, that 30000 that's making them move up their completion date a month, basically. Um, yeah, a little With over a month. They um, probably run into the middle of September. And, well, and I'm thinking, well, you essentially figure that they're thinking of starting first of June, and so, you know, four months, June, yeah, the end of September, first of October is when they're looking to finish. 
So they're going to be a month and a half faster. I think that'd be worth it not to have them in the school. And we have all the kids in the facility. <coughs> I'm not sure if I can have a locker room stand on the floor in my house. Yeah. But those are, those bids are, mm -hmm. that's, just well, too, that's just too much money. We, we can do 634 plus the air conditioning over here, right? Yeah. You want to take a minute to move on to air conditioning here real quick? Do, do we, we have, have anything have, else? No, that's fine. So now it's just kind of a, we need yeah. to decide what yeah, we're going to do here. And, yeah. Um, let's take a minute and look at the HVAC bids here. Uh, the uh, uh, that's a separate attachment on your on your documents there. Your HVAC bids on your iPad. Uh, KVK. The bids are a little bit different. If we would have had this engineered and. Uh, uh, things would have been a lot, a lot more similar. But uh, if you remember, we elected to save that cost, and I would take it out uh, and pursue bids here. Uh, KVK, um, they do some work in town. Uh, they've they've been out and looked at our systems and done a little work here. The uh, 132880 is the air conditioning replacement. Um, the main air handler is in good shape. I told them to leave those if we can, the air handling system. They're, they're in pretty good shape. Uh, uh, and they would replace what they could. So some of the air handling units are, re are replaced. Actually, one of them is, and uh, the other two would stay. The part there, the 8,000, had new Head Start controls. Head Start, these referring to the early education building. That would be to add that system on those controls. Disregard that number, we don't need it. So we're looking at the 132880. And then the boiler system uh, <clears throat> is 866. Uh, one other option to cut costs out of this is to not do the boiler system. Uh, we're going to be diving into the system, taking care of issues. The boiler is in the same situation as the other equipment. It's, uh, it's as old as the building. Uh, this would be putting in two high-efficient boilers. One would be there as a redundant system. If one goes down, we stop heating in the building. It's also, uh, you know, highly efficient. Uh, to do this, they would need to have an electric water heater in there because the gas water heater goes up the same flue pipe as the boiler. Well, if we run PVC pipe up for the exhaust for the high efficiency boilers, we can't run a gas flue pipe up. Uh, that same uh, that same area, so that needs to be replaced with the uh, with electric water heater uh, to avoid that. Uh, this would also be replacing the circulation pumps. Uh, so there's a few differences here. Knip equipment out of Wichita, um, they give us a few options. Option one would just be the air conditioning system. This includes all the air handling units. They told us they couldn't retrofit any of the equipment they would need to replace all the air, uh, air handling units. So that's some of the cost difference you see there. Option two would be the air, air conditioning and the boilers. And then option three, disregard, we'll need that. Um, and then CNIP equipment would require a, a separate control system. Uh, KVK's bid includes the control system. This is separate. So it's another 24500 to and the control system. Now this control system is what we have in our main building. Uh, Knip can have this company install it and connect it all together. So it's not just 24,000 that <coughs> add controls to this. It would be also to upgrade our software to, to run all of the buildings together. Uh, that's a, that would be nice, but for the money, uh, we'd be better off having just a separate system control system just for this library. Uh, so the one system here and one system for everything else. Uh, but it's a smaller, uh, less high dollar system uh, for each one of those. 
Um, on facilities improvements, final numbers, uh, I included a couple of things, network system and intercom system, intercom that I spelled wrong. Uh, <clears throat> unknown, uh, after talking to Clark, we have it in the contract to move those. Whatever it takes to move those, that's part of the contract. So disregard those unknowns. So what we're looking at is this facilities improvements, final numbers. Um, and I had intended all along to include the, uh, the architect fees in this project. It's all part of getting it all together. So the <clears throat> AC and boilers would be from KVK. Here's the bid, how it breaks down the total, 219,480. Knip had 267. 677. So for our money, where we're at, uh, I think uh, KVK is the way to go. Our main building improvements, this is just the alternate base bid from Southern. That's the one that requires uh, you know, the base bid to be done by August 15th. <clears throat> the fire alarm system, uh, this would just be to upgrade the fire alarm system to a battery backup system. We'd still have uh, have to eventually bring this completely up to code. This replaces all the pole stations and horns where they're at. It replaces the panel. Uh, eventually we need to bring that up to code, meaning uh, uh, you know, pole stations within so many feet of each door. Uh, There's smoke yeah, detectors. How long for that? Yeah. It's up in the air. I have to submit a plan to the fire marshal that says we will do this this year and we will revisit it in this in two years to get bids for uh, the second phase of this. Uh, if it comes time and it's we can't afford it, I would submit another proposal to them or a waiver to them that says we can't afford it now, it's a financial hardship. Would you approve us to put this off for another couple of years? That makes sense. So it's it's hard to say we can do it until such and such a day. They, you know, we can't do it indefinitely. But uh, asbestos removal. There's some floor tiles in uh, the current district office, and the uh, and Mrs. Webb's room. Uh, those need to come out, so they'll be part of the project. Uh, there's some asbestos in. Uh, into air handling equipment uh, that may or may not be need to be removed. Uh, working with KNIP, it had to come out because we were replacing air handlers. Uh, I can't remember if we need that. Um, I would know when we get him in here, you know, we approve the bid. We'll know whether we have to have it. Of course, we're not going to do it if we don't have to. And then architect fees and the costs and uh, it's not exact because the reimbursable costs we don't have all of that finalized yet, correct? That's correct. Right. We still have the management part of this. And that puts the total here. Disregard this. I was going to clean this up, but this is how I sent it to you, so disregard that asterisk there. So there are no unknowns? No unknowns. This is what we know that. Recall it's 955,000. We don't really, there's no real wiggle room there. So, some things we could do we don't have to do the boilers. We're in there doing it, uh, taking care of the HVAC system. My recommendation is to, to take care of it now. Uh, I would hate to borrow all this money put all this energy and effort into that, and then two years down the road, our, our boiler's condemned and we have to do something different. What is the normal life expectancy on the boiler? 20 to 25 years. And how old is this place? We're at 1970s, 40. so about 40 years old. It was 60. 60s. Yeah, 62. 62. Okay. Right. Most equipment, 20 to 25 years is <coughs> anything after that. New, new stuff today is worth 20 some years. <laughs> new stuff back then is worth 50 years. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 okay. Well, back then, actually, well, they would have probably told you 25 years back then, but it's 
there are a number based on the boilers that you have. You have some good efficient equipment or some good equipment from that era. And we have some that are 40 years old and still, but once they start to fail, it sort of will snowball on you and it can really, you can get in, yeah. <laughs> And I'm not going to tell you that the high efficiency boiler is going to pay for itself over the next number of years. I'm not selling it to you, but it will save some energy costs. But so, is there any wiggle room in the capital outlay that can come into play here? Uh, no? Not a lot, no. Uh, like some the fire of that, alarm? Or? Yeah, we could, we could pay for the fire alarm uh, with out of capital outlay. Uh, I know one thing um, that we didn't have in the bid specs that uh, I didn't catch, Clark didn't catch. We didn't catch it uh, when Sunday I was walking by my office and saw the uh, air conditioning unit outside my office there and maybe realized, oh, we have to connect the new district office uh, to a separate system, otherwise we have to leave the air conditioner run in the entire, in the entire school to cool that one office. So we didn't have that in the bid, so that'll add a little cost, but we also have some room to we have, yeah, we have reduce some, some costs there. Uh, and my thought there is with the fire alarm system, it's going to be, <laughs> I pointed out fan. Oh. <laughs> I, I can replace that. Uh, including the fire alarm system there, uh, I guess it's kind of our wiggle room there. And it's going to pay for, uh, you know, uh, paying for this over 10 years, the fire alarm system, I don't think is, a, is an issue. Financing a computer for 10 years is a bad decision. But the fire alarm system is going to be around for that long. Um, Any it's a lot of money. Uh, Do you know how big your building is? And I, because I don't know off the top of my head, you know what your square footage of your total of the, high, of the, the K-12 facility? No. Because a new fire alarm, we budget probably, depending on what you do, anywhere from a dollar and a half to two and a half dollars a square foot. So, to me, when I look at your $14,000 number, that's a good number. <laughs> it's a real good number. Even if that's a control panel, that's, that's a pretty good number. This is the, the company I got the bid from, which is in your uh, packet, by the way, is the company that's done our sound system, has done our intercom. Uh, they were in our fire alarm system. They didn't, <laughs> in our old system, and, and cut some wires that they shouldn't have and came back and replaced all that. They've been very good to work with, uh, electronic contracting. Uh, I feel very comfortable with their work. Uh, working with them, I feel very comfortable having them, and I have one phone number to call. I mean, I, we need to fix our sound system, we need to fix our fire alarm, intercom. Uh, they can come out and help us out. My opinion is, I guess we do what is was up there because it started out that we got to do, take care of this building and go as far as the money will take us with the other one, I guess. That's my opinion. There are question, by not doing that one bathroom, how will ADA, will that cause us a little more on an elementary bathroom? <clears throat> no, really that, that separate restroom kind of started out as a way to uh, not restructure those other two bathrooms in that area to make them ADA accessible. Uh, so we have one re restroom that is. With the plans now, it does make those other two accessible. It kind of worked into, well, if we're going to put a restroom here, well, the storage area makes sense. We need the storage. And then it kind of became, well, maybe we do need the restroom because it could be a staff restroom. So to answer your question in a long way, those other two restrooms will be accessible. So that wing, elementary wing, will have accessible. Yeah. When, it, when this gets done, you will have the high school restrooms will now be fully accessible. The middle school already are, and now you'll have a set of restrooms in the elementary wing that are fully accessible. So you're, you've really taken care of your compliance. The 
two, and I'm going to say at the west end, the women's restroom will make go ahead and make it accessible because I'm going to combine two stalls at the end of the run to make a handicapped stall. The boys' restroom I can't because the ramp is too steep to technically meet ADA. So there's no reason to spend money to try to reconfigure it to make it because physically, because of how it's kind of wedged underneath the bleachers, we can't, you just aren't going to be able to make that one compliant. But because you have the other done, you meet the, the legalities of ADA. You've done your best effort to meet the full intent of what's required. Really, the library, this is the bright spot. We thought it might be more than 219000 to bring this up to where it needs to be. <coughs> Are there any thoughts on the numbers? We know the condition of the library. Getting in there, it's not reached its useful life. So that's almost a must. Uh, the school bathrooms, that was the first focus. We got the kids there. What are we going to do with the water rooms? Or what are you thinking? I mean, I, I think we need to find a way to do it. I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, if, if it's scale things down and uh, find somebody, you know, a smaller contractor to just rip out tile and replace fixtures or uh, or if we revisit this next summer. Um, problem is if we're looking at, uh, Clark, in your estimation, if we would rebid this for just the locker rooms next year, would we save any money? Or would we save uh, much well, money? Well, and if you put it out in... <coughs> say December or January so they can get an early schedule and potentially at the first opportunity to get in there. You could open up potentially to give them a little more time in there which would help. But the biggest key with that is is you're, it's not a large project. It's in the, in their mobilization to get somebody out here there's a cost involved with that and the only way to really make that cheaper is to do some other type of more work somewhere. And, you know, and I don't know that you need, you know, that much additional work to help justify that second mobilization. And that's the, kind of the drawback is where we kind of, we're real tight getting started here, but I think that's, that's the biggest thing. I think they're all a little bit afraid of that locker room because I think everyone commented they're just not sure what they're going to get into. And I think they some have some money padded in there that once we get in there we may uncover some things that we didn't count on. But, you know, I don't know how you can, unless you, you know, do a time of material, well, potentially that could cost you more when it was all said and done. And this is something that once, I don't know that we would actually have it for the August 15th deadline, but you sign a contract, get a contractor to set out out here, Maybe we sit down with them at the table and say, okay, what are your thoughts that we can do to this locker room to get it, the cost down and do a portion of what you're looking to have done in a shorter time frame? Um, but on the flip side, you might get more people wanting to bid because they do have a smaller... Yeah, that's the, the, that's the real hard you know, part is you just... It won't be maybe these big... Contractors. It might be some smaller ones. That yeah, are more and there was. I was surprised. There was a couple of contractors <laughs> in Great Bend, and I, you know, the one actually picked up plans. They were here at the pre-bid. They asked questions. I and I really felt like that locker room area was because they've done that at Barton County and a couple other places around here. That they would be a good one to bid on that, but they failed to turn the bid in. So, and unfortunately, he hasn't called me back to because I put a call into him to ask him. Why, you know, if, unless something happened to the gentleman that I was communicating with, which could have happened because I know one of the other contractors we, well, I, it was Don Vaughn, but one of the project vendors that we had done a lot of work with was in an auto accident and was in the hospital for about a week and a half because we were trying to get a hold of him because they were doing some work at our office and we could, 
didn't realize when the guy had his accident that he wrecked his phone and he didn't, it was for a week before he actually had his cell phone back and he started to return phone calls. Those locker rooms, we could look at some local people to tackle that project in a year or so. And the, and the big part would be is, is there a way you could break it down and sequence it so that it wouldn't completely disrupt you, but they could have a like portion of it. That would be the real key is just when you figure out some way so that they have more than two months to do it. Right. You know, it, it would be, Mr. Bergen, see if you agree with this, it would be a little more feasible to do without locker rooms <clears throat> or maybe do without one locker room during the spring season. We probably have more kids out, but a lot less equipment. You know, kids could kids could live out of a duffel bag and you know in track season a little easier than they can in football. Uh, Where we know you have the money doing it next year. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> don't think it would be $280,000, though. What do you think? You wouldn't think it cost that much? No. no. The worst part about it is you never know what's behind those walls with pipe and stuff. I'd rather not chance it yeah. this time and really go way over our money when we can't afford it. And, uh, try and squeeze it in. But. Yeah. And, and right now, there's really not a decision as to whether we can add the locker rooms, it's if we add the locker rooms, we can't do the HVAC system yeah. here. Yeah. This is where we started. I just look at the locker rooms. They, they need it, but they don't affect everybody. Where the bathrooms and the library, probably everybody. <coughs> well, it's a public that. image too. The public sees the restrooms when they come <coughs> to the bins too. <coughs> and I'm fine. And I'm sure, and I know we've all kind of been a part of these conversations. Somebody asked me, can't we, why doesn't the library pay for that? You know, the library system. And it's all, uh, to me, we need to look at it as all school district. The library has increased their contribution. I think it's more important that they increase their contribution every year to help our general fund and we can pick up these capital projects. I think that makes more sense for our budget. So I don't think it's a matter of, well, the school district's taking on all this expense and the library's not doing anything. Uh, they, they are doing their part and it takes time, but uh, we're talking about an you know, extra 15000 a year, but it takes a while to add up to what we're talking about. But. Well, I mean, this number, this group of numbers that we have here, once we get started and we find out that maybe something else is going to cost a little more than what we anticipated, if you said we could pay for that fire alarm on a capital outlay, at least we got that little bit of 14,000 wiggle room, we can move to another area. And right. So, I mean, we don't have to stick to this as being totally coming out of a loan. I, I, once we once get started, we, we can move things around. So right. Right. When, but I'm just right. saying that if the loan if is something they get in there and they find out, oh my gosh, it's going to cost more money to do that, remodeling then. When we close this loan and get the funds, this this will be what's in the loan. Is that oh, you threatened? have to list all these <coughs> items? Well, the, the, money, the dollar the amount. amount. Yeah, I'm just saying, go ahead and get the dollar amount, but we right. could move that one over yeah. if we had to spend that extra money somewhere else. As long as you don't have to list it as yeah. that being right. specifically right. for a fire alarm. That's what I'm saying. Well, I don't know. No, I mean, the bid is fine. There's money in it. Any further discussion? Let me explain the four motions I have. The fourth motion is one I added. It was not in your packet. Uh, the first one would be the main building improvements. That's the alternate base bid, the one that gets it done by uh, the 15th of August. The second one is the HVAC system, air conditioning, boiler system from KVK, uh, and the control system is included. Uh, 
uh, and then the fire alarm is the third one. The fourth one would be just so, just to spell out expectations for all of us. Uh, there might be one more motion in here that's, than is needed, but I want to make sure we're spending this much money, we're all clear on what's expected. These numbers here, the final numbers that are up there uh, that we discussed here, that's what we're talking about for this total amount of 952825 That's the amount we would be financing for all of those projects. What do most schools do? Do they usually try to get it done in the summertime? I mean, or are they? It, it's about a 50-50. It, it all depends on a... Well, how do you get around not using the restroom? Well, if, if most of the time, a lot of times, <laughs> we get into remodeling restrooms when we put an addition, and we'll put new restrooms in the addition so they can move into it, start school, and then come back and get the stuff inside the building and renovate. But we're not adding square footage here to do that. But that's, I won't say the norm, but that seems to be a lot of the remodels that we do. We usually will build some new square footage, and that's one of the things that we always put in the new, because it's easier to get that done over summer or throughout, so that that's built outside of kids being in the space. Then they move in, and then we can go in and take over an area. And the more area in your building you can turn over to a contractor for a given period with some flexibility, the better the numbers will be. Because their whole thing is, is like anything, that's, they're not, when you remodel, they're just not sure what they're going to get into. And they're gambling that they're, if we say it has to be done by a set date, that anything hiccups they run into, they've got to figure out how to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Well, when we had talked about this, we talked about okaying it up to 955. Mm -hmm. Do we need that in the motion that we go up to 955 so we don't have to revisit this? Or do you want to stay it's, straight it, at this there, number? If one? there are other things, we, we have money. we have money and capital outlay to take care of okay. them. With the, with the four motions, kind of almost appears that we're spending twice as much as what we intend to spend. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think just that the last mm -hmm. motion would be good. Well, I don't have a problem with the top three, but then when it's the, the bottom one, it says that if we do that, then it almost seems like we're spending twice as much as what we should be spending. Uh, you're talking about when we publish the minutes yeah. how that's going to look. Yeah. It probably wouldn't hurt to, to cross off the dollar amounts on those first three motions. And then just the last motion would kind of cover everything. As a total. As a total amount. Okay. As Clark, would yeah. that be sufficient if we yeah. didn't include a dollar amount? Yeah, because really you're, 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 you're just acknowledging <laughs> you're going to accept the bid. Right. And then. Okay. And they have to be separate motions. Uh, Can we listen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me make it last longer. <laughs> Mr. President, yes. I move the board approves the bid from Sutherland Builders. Second motion. For, for alternate base. Base bid. Yes, bid. Okay. Second motion. So moving second to approve the bid from Sutherland Builders for the alternate base bid. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Mr. President, I move the board approve the bid from KVK for library um, HVAC replacement. Second. Moving second to approve the bid from KVK for the library HVAC replacement. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Mr. President, I move the board approve the bid from the electronic contracting company for replacement of the fire alarm system. Second. Move and seconded to approve the bid from the electronic contracting company for replacement of the fire alarm system. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7-0. Looking 
for a total amount motion. I'm tired of talking. I'm not going. Mr. President, I move the board approve the facility improvement project figures as presented in the amount of uh, $952,825. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the facility improvement project figures as presented in the amount of $952,825. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Okay. Thank you, Clark. Thank you. I will notify Sutherland and we will get a contract to him and get him rolling. Okay. We'll be in touch. Yeah. We'll right. be setting up a free construction meeting and get things moving. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> <coughs> Moving on. Resolution for lease purchase plans. Uh, this would just be to finalize. Uh, the financing with uh, St. John National. Uh, it also gives me authorization to execute the agreement. That's on page 40. Uh, spells out all those things. Doesn't spell out the interest rate and all that. We've already approved that. You all have that resolution in the packet. Does anyone need us to read it? Uh, Mr. President, I move the board approved resolution 2014-14. Second. Yeah. Um, no. I just want. Can you vote on this? Yeah, you've already voted to use okay. the use the bank. Okay. I just yeah. This is just the <coughs> working agreement. Okay. I don't have a problem with it, and let's see if you do. I don't. I was just. <laughs> yeah, there's no financial gain for the bank no, with I this resolution. It's I think. Already, you guys have already voted. So. Uh, did we get a second? Yeah. Okay. So we moved and seconded to approve the uh, the board resolution 2014-15 as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Moving on to the capital outlay resolution. This is uh, the, the new school finance law allows us to, uh, allows school districts to have some more flexibility in what they spend their capital outlay funds on uh, things would be uniforms, uh, band, sports, uh, computer software. We've been able to purchase hardware, you know, a computer, but not the software the way that we can purchase the software. Um, maintenance of buildings and vehicles. Uh, maintenance would include custodial salaries. Um, so that could free some money up in our operating funds. Uh, currently, we have a resolution that expires in 2017. Uh, it's established at eight mills. This resolution maintains that eight mills. Uh, something else in the new law allows this capital outlay authorization to be extended permanently. We could set a number of years on it. Uh, then we need to worry about uh, is that resolution up? When does it expire? When do we need to renew? If we just make it permanent, it's then up to this board every year, how many mills to establish in the budget uh, from year to year for capital outlay. Um, so this, uh, you know, this allows us to control our budget a little more. Uh, you know, the capital outlay dollars are not dependent on state aid. They're not dependent on enrollment fluctuations. Uh, so that allows us to control that budget. We do need to be very careful with just saying, okay, well, we'll just pay all our custodial salaries out of capital outlay. But once we do that, and something else fills that hole in the budget where we were paying custodial salaries, if things would change, well, we can't just move back to what we were doing and start paying 
custodial salaries out of our regular uh, operating budget. Uh, so we need to be very careful about doing that. Uh, flexibility is good, but it's not a situation where I think we want to just move everything we can to capital outlay. Uh, eight mils seems like a lot, but once you start moving those things. Uh, so I still think we need some wiggle room in our capital outlay fund to be able to adjust that when the ability fluctuates quite a bit. Uh, so any questions about that resolution? You said those were right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this would extend it permanently. And again, this is the maximum. So we set it from zero to eight mils when we published the budget in August. What do we have it set at this Eight. <coughs> but this is part of the new law. Yes. And the reason we need to publish a resolution is because our current resolution spells out the exact things we can spend that money on. If we don't pass a new resolution that spells out those things that are additional items, uh, we can't take advantage of that. So that's why we need the new resolution. Mr. President, I move the board approve resolution number 2014-15 as presented. Second. Move second to approve resolution 2014-15 as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. Opposed, <coughs> nay. Motion carries 7 0. All right, math curriculum. Uh, we spent some resources and a lot of time and effort with our math curriculum. Um, and uh, the all the curriculum is pretty much done. We need to clean some things up. I included kindergarten here and algebra one for you just to show you uh, what's here. You know, this is all based on the new state standards, which is based on uh, Common Core. Uh, you'll notice there's no reference to President Obama or socialism here. It's going to be okay with our, uh, even though we're with some of our Common Core standards are there. And believe me, I understand the the, the being leery about federal intervention here. I don't believe this is federal control uh, at all. Uh, I think where we're headed is a lot better than No Child Left Behind, where we have been. Uh, a lot of things, I don't want to get too political here, but uh, with No Child Left Behind, that's where the focus was on test. All our kids have to pass that one test, and uh, it doesn't matter what else the kids learn. Uh, this is the entire curriculum. So. Uh, I'll, I'll have the finalized draft for you to approve at the next meeting, but I did want to get this out to you and show you a few of those things and how it's laid out. Um, and this is from our teachers, again, based on the state standards, which is based on uh, the, the Common Core curriculum. Um, probably the biggest change from what we have been doing is just some grade level shifts. You know, maybe... Uh, Fractions. Is there a grade level change there with what we've been doing with fractions? Yeah, they kind of went from like fourth, fifth, more to third. Now they're kind of okay. getting introduced. So minor like things like that, and also what we're asking the kids to do, not just not just solve this problem, but or not just do this math problem, but solve a problem and explain what you're doing. So, any quick questions about our math curriculum and what's laid out there? Report. And you have those reports on page 53 to 59. The first few pages there are the uh, entire year for 2013. Normally, doesn't someone from the foundation come? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't take time to ask them to come. Uh, okay. if, if the board would like to. Hear from them on the investments we should sure do that. Well, it's been a good year, so <laughs> you can. Yeah. The numbers kind of speak for themselves there. Um, he came out last year, and he's on the board and uh, on the investment board. Yeah. Who is all on the board now? I don't know. The audience. He oversees the donations. I don't know. 
Good. Well, how much did it go up? Okay. Uh, last year, in the earnings, total earnings, uh, we're looking at the right-hand column. Uh, let's start at the top, the beginning fund balance, and then you see the earnings. The total earnings is two hundred fourteen thousand five hundred sixty. Uh, we'll disperse twenty-five thousand, and then there's uh, fees associated with that. Support it. Uh, twenty-five thousand went to the library. Yes. And then the net change was you know, 181000 And again, this includes scholarship funds and other things as well. I'll show you those. That's on the last page of this uh, report here. So, you know, we have 32000 in in, uh, in disbursements between costs and, uh, and usage. An increase of $225,000 over the whole day. Well, that's for the whole year of uh, administering the whole plan. Investing oh, the money. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. And then uh, this is the grant approved, which is our withdrawal. Um, this, starting on page 56, is the, um, the first quarter of this year. So those two columns will be the same because we're just through one quarter. So you notice the net change is a loss, but we're only through one quarter. We're not going to withdraw more money this year. So we're withdrawing 40000 this year? Yes. So that was the added contribution from the library fund for library operations. So last year's 25, this year it's 40. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a good year in the stock and bond market. And then this is the list, and it's tough to read them without zooming in, but all of the, uh, how it's divided up with all the library funds and, and then the various scholarship funds. And those first amounts are initial amounts. And clear the, the market value as of the end of March. For each one of those. So. Do the board um, members have any meetings the, during the year? The foundation board, our local foundation board, yeah, we had one. And uh, do they ever talk about how to figure out to raise money for the foundation? Yeah, or? every time we've met, and you know, I've. I don't know. We probably met twice last year and once this year. Um, it's, this is one area where I had hoped to do a better job with. It just hasn't happened. Uh, I'd hope to be able to use the foundation a little more, generate some more interest, pub publicize it a little more, uh, and haven't gotten it done. It's on the website, though, right? It is. Okay. It I is. I yeah. There needs to be more on the website. It really needs, and we discussed this at the last meeting about maybe having somebody paying, you know, a few hundred dollars a year for somebody to be the executive director of that. The bylaws allow for that. Um, it's and having the superintendent out in the community begging for money for I'm the district is a, is a little bit different than having somebody from the community working on behalf of the school, uh, the foundation to generate money is a little different than me or somebody who, Somebody once told us and, uh, about putting like little business cards mm -hmm. at the mortuaries. So if a family comes in and they say we don't know who to give to, you know, right. you can show them some of these things. That might be just a small thing that we could do. Right. Give them minutes, just some information and things like that. People right. can give memorials and stuff. But I think having a director would be a good idea. I do. As our budget squeezes, this is going to become more. We can do a lot with this money if we've got the money. Well, this is a way to get money into our general fund. Plus, so. well, we have too much money that's leaving our county. We need to bring it back in when people pass away, going away instead of coming back here. But. 
So I don't I don't have a, a solution for you today, but that's just one thing we've discussed. The foundation board was open to that idea of hiring somebody. You know, yeah, you're not yeah. talking it's not a full time job, but just a little something to encourage somebody to. Well, there needs to be someone to direct people to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's questions. Right. And right now that's you know Julianne and I. Yeah. Really, that's what it is. Well, Our district office. Do fundraisers during you know or auctions and yeah. things like that. I think that would be good for the city too. Are you applying? <laughs> no, but I might just pay the money. How much do I pay? <laughs> well, pay more than my secretary's yes. job right now. <laughs> you know, I'll that till you take the job. <laughs> well, thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. Any questions? About that. Mr. President, yes. Don Hildebrand is no longer on the board. Sean Collins is the representative from San County. Okay. All right. Good to know. And who's on the local board? Do you have that one? On the local education foundation board? Mm -hmm. Pete Witt, Tom Turner, Leah Christman, Nikki Bear, Mr. Meyer, and myself. Carl. Yeah. He could be our director. <laughs> on the direct line to somebody on the board. <laughs> okay. Fee schedules. Uh, this is one of our uh, annual calendar items on the Board of Education business calendar. We need to approve fees. Um, Textbooks, music, instrument rentals, yearbooks, uh, no increases there. Uh, breakfast fees will stay the same. Lunch fees will be going up a dime. Uh, we're required to maintain a certain level based on um, the federal guidelines for what, what they pay for free lunch. Uh, we're well below that. We can only be required to increase by a dime. Uh, to get there. We're getting close. Um, of course, that adjusts a little bit each year, that that target amount, but uh, uh, maybe a couple more years and we'll be at that level. And we'll, we won't have to go this dime increase anymore. But our uh, food service budget operates about 20000 in the red uh, each year. Uh, the last couple of years uh, between state aid, federal aid, and fees collected compared to what we pay out. Uh, you know, we're not trying to make money on this deal, but of course we want to operate as close to even as we can. But, so you know, our operating fund subsidizes our, our lunch program, about 20000 each year. Uh, the Life After School program, that's a new one. Uh, we added that one last year. All sports ticket, I uh, just evened up some of those. And, uh, bumped up the cost of the adult and the family pass. Uh, it's still a pretty darn good deal. Uh, any questions about the fees? Mr. Mark? Mm -hmm. Can you fix my... I can. I hit the wrong button. Oh. We're looking for the games. We did <laughs> We're way off. <laughs> What's that? We're running that much in the air. That's going to be it. Our, our breakfast fees are pretty good for what we serve, uh, comparing to other districts, and uh, for the amount of food they serve, uh, I think that's pretty a pretty solid number. Uh, the The breakfast fees aren't uh, subject to the same requirements as the, the lunch fees. Do most schools run in the red on their food service? Uh, it varies. Um, I haven't asked, I guess. We're just uh, keeping the prices down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, three years ago, it was, it, it was a matter of $1,000 mm -hmm. in the red. Last couple of years has been $20,000. Uh, so from my experience, uh, it was more like $50,000 in the red. But that's just one example that I know of, so I can't speak to. So with us. A lot of oven or a stove goes down, we just take that out of the general? No, it would be equipment out of capital outlay, something like that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't include that for uh, food service costs. 
And I'm really thinking just mainly personnel uh, and food, really. Personnel costs and food. This month, this year. Yeah. Drought, California, drought yeah. here. <laughs> it rained. Still drought. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. President, I move the board approve the 2014 15 fee schedule as presented. Second. Move and seconded to approve the 2014-15 fee schedule as presented. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 <coughs> KSB dues and legal assistance fund. Uh, this is a uh, <coughs> standard item we have every year. The uh, dues for KSB is almost $5,000 there. And then the legal assistance fund is 1650 I have yet to call our, our board attorney uh, and have him go on the clock, uh, but I, I talk to attorneys at KSB quite a bit. Uh, uh, administrators can call them as they need to uh, keep us out of trouble. Uh, I, it's more than worth the money there. Uh, and uh, it's my recommendation we continue with uh, being a member of KSB. Mr. Pr Mr. President, I approve the. Or I move that the board approve the dues of forty nine hundred thirty three dollars for the 2014-15 membership to KASB, and the fees of one thousand six hundred fifty dollars for legal assistance. Second. The move and seconded to approve the dues of. $4,933, 2014-15 membership in KASB, and the fee of $1,650 for the legal assistance fund. Is there any discussion? On all in favor, aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 out. <coughs> we have a building usage request. Um, this is related to a, a situation where somebody had questioned uh, the school providing prayer at meals for the athletic banquet um, and another situation where we contacted attorneys and asked what you know, what's our legal obligation here and, uh, you know, it's kind of been the understanding the booster club is providing the athletic banquet uh, and booster club's not the school uh, so we don't really need to worry about it and their, their question was well are they treated like another organization that would want to use the facility or rent the facility? And, uh, we just we just have them come do it. And, um, so well, that could be perceived as a, a school event. The Booster Club is just setting it up and buying the meals. So uh, to get around that, I, th I think it's kind of been the understanding. Booster Club is the organization putting on these athletic banquets, and uh, so to approve this facility request. This would be a request from the Booster Club. Uh, the president would be responsible for that, the two athletic banquets every year. Um, and we would waive the fee for that, and the time frame would just be indefinite. And, uh, that doesn't necessarily keep us, uh, uh, you know, you can't uh, keep everybody from suing you for anything. But uh, I do think it's important to, you know, consider diversity and somebody's got a problem with something, but it's uh, it's not the school promoting a certain religion. The Booster Club will do what they do, and uh, this will make that clear that and draw that line between Booster Club and, and the school board. So if we approve it and have the Booster Club built, we can still say a prayer before the meeting? Well, we won't. We won't. Mm -hmm. the booster Club can do whatever they want. Booster booster club, yeah. Mr. Yeah. President, I move the board approve the to waive the fees for the Booster Club building uses as presented. Second. Move and second to approve to waive fees for the Booster Club building usage as presented. Is there any discussion? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. clock software uh, this is one of those items that I, I think we need to take care of it's fairly expensive so I kind of wanted to bring it to the board's attention uh, before you see that on the, on the on the check register uh, this will be a system that integrates with our accounting software 
and uh, human resources software. Uh, so employees would be t clocking in on a computer in the building, um, and then that would import into our software. There would be no more hand figuring time sheets, so it would be a lot more efficient. Uh, we better keep track of uh, and hold people accountable. And the ongoing fee is about $1,500. It does take $3,500 to set it up. Uh, that's a lot of this. We ran into the same thing with our accounting software. It's just, it's a lot of money up front. Uh, but that gets it going. So, any questions about the system? Who checks, who logs in on a computer to record that I'm here? And you would log in yourself. Everybody? Just the the no, 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 no. Oh, just, just the, the hourly classified <coughs> staff. Okay. Yeah. Right. Those being paid hourly. <coughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That's what I thought. But yeah. I didn't see that on here. So. Well, it says in, in, in tenants. Oh. The man very by employee. Yeah. They, you know, are, and this would be a little less. When we, this is their, their quote. Uh, oh. So oh. we wouldn't be paying for employees we're not using. So. If it's 34, then it's 34. But it's, no, it's not everybody. We're not having. And when you when one logs in, it's you log in like a title or something like not like a ID, like a finger ID or a. Octopus. You know, there's. Well, I, I think there's that. that. At least a, <laughs> yeah, I think there's that capability. Yeah. To do to do those things, I didn't get into that with them, but. You know about what's available for as far as those two ones. But. I just didn't know what that might cost. Obviously, there's probably a cost on on top of that. Yeah, there may be. I don't. I don't. And I don't know what capabilities they have. But yeah, this, this would be. I I come to the computer and I log into my system and say that I'm here. You're getting it so that someone could log in for someone else. I stand easy to remember my. Like passcode. Well, I know what it is. And I love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. We have better people than that. Yeah. So I'm assuming this ongoing, ongoing license and support is to update, it includes updating or anything mm -hmm. that goes along with their yeah. new programs and stuff. Yeah. President, I'm the board approved purchase of the attendance on demand software. Is there a second? Second. I move and second yeah. to approve the purchase of the attendance on demand software. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Mm -hmm. Moving into communications. Board member activities and reports. Stan, start with you. What was that meeting out of that here? Who? Foundation. The foundation meeting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not a member. Yes, sir. Well, well, see, I'm I was sorry. sitting here waiting to be a member, and I got. Hey, I gotta give me credit off the top of my head. Yes. Yes. Well, it's good now. I was just. I, my it apologies. sounds like the exact people I was with the other day. <laughs> And I was going to take credit for being there, and then I thought, well, maybe I wasn't. So. You were. Okay. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. But anyway, we had that meeting, and uh, uh, we discussed scholarships and and uh, someone to uh, be in charge of uh, website stuff, maybe mm -hmm. in future. And raising money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, we voted for uh, Pete Witt to continue to be the uh, chairperson of the committee for a really long time. So that was what we got accomplished. He was absent, wasn't he? No, he was here. <laughs> <laughs> he was here. He was here. He's just absent in the mind. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But, uh, no, it was uh, in the meeting and set all the scholarship amounts at the same amount that they have in the past years and what they are. I don't have any idea of it. Thanks. Anyway, that was uh, just a sure. 
Well, I think I missed another PVC meeting. Oh, good. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss. You didn't miss, Barb. Oh, good. Okay. You can still make it. I can, uh, is it Thursday? 20, 21st. Oh, the 21st. You can, you can come for breakfast and then you can stay. Oh, okay. Um, and I, am I on Cornwall scholarship still? Julianne? Hang on. My computer crashed, so as soon as I get back, okay. I'll check for you. I hope you let me know afterwards, but I can't think of anything else other than attending track meets and watching kids come to graduation. I don't have anything. I don't either. Um, last month, Josh and I went to the South Central Kansas Co-op Board meeting, and um, Josh probably talked about this too last week. Uh, Mr. Meyer and I did the senior interviews. We've got some really good seniors getting ready to depart out into the real world. They all did a fantastic job. Administrative reports. Um, we completed state assessments, We've done a few weeks now. Um, we kind of put them off knowing that people across the state were having issues with software and stuff, so we put ours off pretty much as long as we could, and we were able to complete them just fine. We didn't have any hiccups with kids with mass amount of kids getting kicked off or anything like that. So. We got those complete um, results. We won't know till August with them doing a new test and so on. It's just going to be a while before we have those results. Um, April 29th, the fifth and sixth grade band and Voca Motion put on a concert in the small gym. I thought that those kids did a nice job with that. We had our elementary track meet last Friday, the be best day weather-wise we've had in a, a long time for that. Um, went quick. It was done ahead of schedule, so. Um, it went well. The kids had a good time that afternoon. Uh, we completed both preschool and kindergarten screenings in the month of April. We had 22 kids go through the kindergarten screening process. Um, 20 of those will go on to kindergarten next year. Uh, we had 24 kids aged 3 through 5 complete the preschool screening process. Um, which really our preschool numbers are going to be higher than that. The reason that number is low is because if they were screened last year and are in kindergarten right now, or I'm sorry, in preschool right now, they don't have to go through that screening process again. So that's 24 new kids that were screened for preschool next year. Um, I can't remember, have, did we ever mention the school wide at a board meeting? It might, a little might have been a long time ago. Um, Towards the beginning of the year, we went through the process of, of applying to be a school-wide Title I school. kind of gives us some flexibility with how we use our, our Title I funds. Instead of just using them on the at-risk kids, we can use them on, on everybody. Um, kind of a lengthy process we had to go through, kind of looking at different data within the school, talking about what did we feel like were some perceived strengths and weaknesses of the school, and so on. And, and we involved the staff a little bit with some of that. but. We just found, uh, submitted a report to KSDE that was like 40-some pages long. We did find out last week our plan was approved, so we don't have to, to redo any part of it. It was approved as presented, so next year will be what's considered a, a school-wide title school, which will give us some flexibility with, with some of those title funds. Um, and then probably, you know, kind of winding things down, next Tuesday is the last day of school. We get out at 11 o'clock, and then the staff's last day will be um, that Wednesday, we've got you know kindergarten and preschool do a little promotion ceremony. I think kindergartens is this Friday, and then preschools is, is next Monday. But everybody's just kind of winding things down, I guess, for the year. You mentioned the first bullet there. Did I miss that? Which one? Your students of the month. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, our last <laughs> students of the month: uh, kindergartner Rafael Gonzalez and third grader Mackenzie Hacker. Um, those kids that won throughout the year, I'm going to take them out to eat this Thursday. So just kind of a reward for those kids. We'll take them out for lunch and get them away for an hour from the building. Mr. Byron, huh? my computer crashed. I lost all of the motions from approving these schedules forward. Okay. Do you have those or? Yeah. 
I'm not sure we all remember. <laughs> or would you like me to use my memory? Play it back. Um, I've got fees, approved fee schedule 2014-15. Raise your hand if you made that one. I did that. Okay. I did that one, and Carl did the next one, and then I did the next one. We could play it back on the camera. <coughs> Next Sunday. Yeah. Vance, yeah, so did you do that? Did you have the tones? I'm just down. I didn't do it. Let's take it the software. I don't know that one. Who? Who? I did, I did the software. I did the software. Do we know who second in to approve the fee schedule? I didn't write it down. I think Vance did. I know what, which one? The fee schedule. The fee? Yeah, what about KASB news? I, Carl, I made motion. Yeah, I need a second. I did. You did. Well, who did the second on the building usage? I'm sorry. Oh, I, need I did the second on the building usage. Yeah, yeah. 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 you made motion. I seconded. Carl and I both seconded. Yeah, Barb and Archie. A little quicker. Yeah. Thank you. Are we up to see? Anything else, Mr. Rowe? Uh, nope, that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Berger? Um, yes. Enrollment. I see enrollment. We might be down a student or two, I think, from a couple months ago. 157, 7 through 12. You can see the class sizes. It's pretty been pretty consistent. Um, I mentioned uh, at State Music, right? Very on oh, that was the day of prom. Uh, Chloe uh, received uh, one rating for clarinet and a two for vocal at State Music, which is a good accomplishment. High school band and choir had a, uh, had a concert in the square last Tuesday evening. It was pretty warm, but it went off pretty well. Kids did a good job. Um, the honors luncheon we held that last Wednesday in the courtyard. Had a lot of kids that participated in that. Art contest we went on May first, and I just put down. I, got, um, I don't. If you have questions, I, I couldn't uh, exactly explain what uh, second sculpture means, or don't take that the wrong way. I'm just Mrs. Banky uh, explained it to me, but those were the kids got. So she said they did a great job. Kids we took, and those were what they. Uh, participate in and what they got awards for. So, um, junior High Activities Banquet, uh, some of you were there on the 24th. We recognized the Junior High kids for activities. Uh, we're currently working on pre-enrollment numbers for classes, schedules, and stuff for next year. We've got all uh, those in, so we're working to put numbers together. Um, activity Banquet for the high school is tomorrow night at 6.30. Uh, class night is Friday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, baccalaureate is Friday <coughs> evening. Uh, you're all invited to all those, obviously. At 7 o'clock is Baccalaureate in the auditorium. Uh, Ministerial Alliance will take care of that. We had kids, we've done this before, we had kids in the Hutch News Honor. We put kids in there for various things, and uh, Mrs. Hacker uh, made sure I Academic, we had Skyler, Tim, and <coughs> Taylor. Fine Arts Performance, Zerio, and Madison, and Overcoming Challenge. Asus. They have different top or different uh, categories you could be in. Um, junior High CPL Trek, which we have the honor of hosting. And that starts tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So, guys, come on out if you're so inclined. That should be exciting weather. It might be fairly chilly at 10 o'clock, but it's supposed to, hopefully the wind will be blowing for them all hour. Maybe Mrs. Burning has already invited you. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe she already has. Right. Yeah, maybe she already has. Right. Uh, and then we get, um, because, it was, because it was so much fun, we get to host the high school one on Thursday. That started at 3 o'clock for the lead. Um, administrative. Uh, I put on there graduation. As you know, last year, um, I'll, we'll meet uh, Saturday in the teacher's room. I'll go over any kind of last minute instructions. Um, we'll have the, uh, it'll be set up like it was last year. You know, the risers clear, the, we'll be able, like a stage clear at the east end and the board 
and myself and Mr. Meyer and Mrs. Binky, the uh, senior sponsor, will be up on the stage. And the kids will come around from the north and come across like we did when I read their names. And then we can work on, or we can do just what we've done before as far as handing out the diplomas. If uh, Chad and Stan want to do that, if Carl will do that when Logan comes across, uh, you guys can, however you want to work that out. And where Mr. Meyer can be when he can congratulate the kids as they come across. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, I'm open to how you guys want to do that. We can talk about that on Saturday. You guys can have your own plan, how you want to present those um, on that day. We have 23 seniors. I'm hoping on that day we have 23 seniors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. any, any input on that, Carl? Yeah, if you have uh, some. Yeah. you want to be up there and yeah. 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 your boy. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Is it all right with the board if these three do that? Mm -hmm. I will not be there. Be okay. I'm going to try to make it, but I'm going to try the graduation to go to, too. So. Okay. okay. But it's earlier in the day. But. Yeah, you, yeah, if you need, I mean, just, yeah, you can haul it, well, you can haul it, Mr. Meyer, if you end up not, yeah. And you know for sure you're not going to be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can haul it, Mr. Meyer, if you're not going to be Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you have any questions, I mean, it'll be, it's pretty, um, We'll, we'll go over it, but if you have any questions between now and then, holler. If you have any questions about graduation or anything, that starts at 4 o'clock. Um, we'll go over that. And you all should have a copy of the activity account in your uh, iPads. Thank you. So, Mr. Bergen, mm -hmm. Mr. Meyer. Yeah, um, <coughs> the first item is the mission, vision, and core values. We've worked on this for, for quite a while here, uh, getting this all put together and a little bit of it change to our mission statement uh, uh, and then our vision uh, what do we want our, our vision to be and kind of spell some of those things out and then the core values I would like to ask the board to approve this next month um, so I didn't want to ask you to approve it but just having having seen it I've sent it out maybe in a Friday note before but our mission is to ensure that students will find their purpose and become successful lifelong learners positive contributors in the changing world very similar to what we have already uh, just maybe a little more uh, that we're going to make sure these things happen rather than just open the door and let kids in it's their job to make sure it happens I mean, they play a part for sure but uh, uh, we, we want to make sure we're making it happen for all those kids and what does that mean how do we achieve that mission we want to be an excellent school district with effective staff members and developing successful students. What do those three things mean? A few key words there. Um, what does it mean to be a successful student? What does it mean to be an effective staff member? Um, and so on. Notice that when prepared for their future, kind of looks like an edit there. You know, saying prepared for the future, <laughs> kind of a difference, Just be prepared for their future. What we think their the future is might be a little different than what they want. So, and we really think that's important for them to find part of that too. And then the whole idea of that purpose, passion, and pride. Uh, what do those really mean to us? Uh, about purpose, we're going to focus on kids. The reason we have the little the little chair over there, uh, always focusing on the kids, uh, always getting better. What is passion? Uh, relationships are important engaging kids uh, everybody's learning and growing uh, again with that idea and then pride having high expectations for ourselves and everybody else and then uh, and that idea of good character responsibility integrity some of those things so any initial thoughts on that um, I do want to make this an official part of our you know, our board documents so that our mission statement and everything. Staff has had a lot of input in this and our uh, site councils as well. So I really like what you came up with. <clears throat> it signifies what we're all about. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll ask you to approve that next time if, if you have other input that you didn't think of now. Uh, be sure and share that with me. Uh, assessments and curriculum, I've kind of already covered that. Uh, the assessments it was a mess. You know, we didn't start till late on purpose. Uh, teachers were very nervous because we didn't start right away. But 
it was a, such a disaster. Uh, to give you an idea, Stafford was working pretty hard on it. You know, Kim Volker works over there and works over here. I think she was extra nervous because she saw how hard they were working over there to get things going and we're going to be behind. And uh, We actually got done before then. We started quite a bit ways after them. And we didn't put a lot, as much effort into it, so it was a little unnerving, but uh, we got it done. Uh, senior interviews, uh, it was, it's a great experience. It's pretty neat to uh, interview those kids. And, uh, they look sharp. They do a great job. Uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, I sent you a message about that, but uh, uh, Jamie Laufer of the PTO, she put together to have them, uh, somebody come in and give staff members massages. And uh, so we we paid for half of that. PTO paid for half of that. Uh, she kind of got all that together. Stuco provided lunch for teachers. Uh, those two things aren't near enough to uh, appreciate our folks in the building. Uh, but it's a it's a good gesture. On the administrative part, the amended budget start enrollment was a little higher. Uh, we have to republish our budget. I did that. It was in the paper last week. Uh, so we'll have to vote to officially approve that. So it publishes. We wait 10 days. Then we can approve it. Um, so the budget numbers you've been seeing have been based on that smaller budget. Uh, so the numbers will look a little better. That does mean a lot more money. We've, we've known about this for some time. Just to recall, last year we republished our budget maybe in March and then had to redo it in June. We're not doing that again. I waited till the last minute until we could uh, sign no. Um, board meeting dates, something I, oh, uh, sorry, the, the amended budget is in your packet on page 68. So that's what was in the, uh, in the paper. We'll have to have a budget hearing at, in our June meeting. So if anybody wants to protest it. The board meeting dates, um, We've talked about this a few times. Uh, the second Monday of the month would allow us a little more time to get things together, financial reports. Um, if there's not a, an objection, we'll kind of plan on that. Does anybody have any thoughts on having meetings on the second Monday compared to the first Monday? doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, we'll, so we just thought if there's not a big reason. Also, you know, Julie Ann serves on the city council as our mayor. She, uh, she has meetings on the first and third. First and third. First and third. So, so this would be a, an off week for her. Uh, uh, the local option budget, the special election, uh, I really just included this has a, is there any questions? Uh, I sent this all to you. Uh, this information is on our website. All that information is there, and I hope simple enough for, for everybody to kind of understand. You don't need to be an expert in school finance. Bottom line is the legislature is taking money away from uh, taking money out of our general fund budget to make up for that, we need to increase our local option budget. I did include this as a potential capital outlay reduction. We could make that change, but I did leave it as the goal is to maintain a relatively, maintain a relatively flat mill levy. I think it's not honest to say we're going to keep the same mill levy uh, or we're going to stay under so many mills and uh, uh, two things. It's, it's tough to do that and still operate the district. Uh, and also, it's not just mills that we're looking at. You're looking at dollars levied. Uh, and then the total mill levy history. Uh, you can see we're as low as we've been for quite some time. Uh, I like that as a property owner. Well, I think it's important as board members for us to educate the public as much as we can about the need for this. It's not that we want to increase taxes. But so. I plan to uh, 
maybe publicize that we would have a public meeting at 6.30 on June 2nd. We could just have, have it in here. And if anybody wants to show up and ask questions about it, this would be before our board meeting. Rather than having a separate night where people would show up, maybe only one or two people show up. I, uh, I would just publicize it that if you all wanted to be here, uh, it would still be a public meeting, but if you're not here until 7 for the board meeting, it's not really that big a deal. So, Are you going to make any signs? Are you take them up at the bank? And... I, I will take those sheets, uh, this document, and put a few around town. Um, and Terry is going to do a story here at the beginning of next month or at the end of this month. Maybe get a front page story about it. Double check with him and probably do better if we did it before before that meeting. But I've I've received no questions in my office about about anything. Uh, we are going to have a, a staff cookout on Tuesday. We're going to. Joe and Lisa Cornwell's house offered to host us. So I'll go out and cook some burgers for everybody and have a good time at year end. Um, our roofer, our roofing consultant is going to be back in. This will be a yearly thing um, with checking out our roofs and suggestions for uh, maintenance and all that and upkeep. I think that's uh, money well spent. I was pretty happy with the way that went. We won't be spending 40 some thousand mm -hmm. every year on repairs, but. Uh, I think we'll be money ahead having somebody that knows what to do and looking into those things. So that's all for my report. Good. Thank you. So we need an executive session? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For personnel. With, uh, with principal and myself. for supplemental contracts and okay. a couple other items. Does anyone need a break before we go into the session? Okay. 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 Hello. My suggestion is 10 minutes unless I uh, have entertain a motion to go to the executive session with the staff the personnel. Mr. President, I move the board go into executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of non-elected personnel with Mr. Bergen and Mr. Olive to be included and that we return to open session in 10 minutes. Second. Second. We have a second to go into executive session <coughs> to discuss personal matters with Mr. Bergen, Mr. Olive, Mr. Meyer, and the board to return in 10 minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was nay. Motion carried 7 0. For uh, supplemental positions to fill. Make a recommendation to hire uh, Nick Garcia as a head football coach for high school and uh, a weight room sponsor for the summer. Mr. President, I move to hire Nick as uh, head football high school coach and weight room. Second. Moved and seconded to hire Nick Garcia as the head football coach and weights. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carry 6 1. Other recommendations? Uh, move. Uh, we get a motion to approve Tacey Axman as assistant high school volleyball coach. Mr. President, I would yes. move to hire Casey Axman as the assistant volleyball coach. Second. Moved and seconded to hire Casey Axman as the assistant high school volleyball coach. Mm -hmm. Did you want to excuse yourself from me? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Okay. Barb is going to excuse herself from this vote. That way it doesn't show up as a no vote, just as a reminder. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay? No, we'll get her again. Motion carried, 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> I um I forgot what I was gonna say. I uh, moved to approve the rest of the supplemental list as presented. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the hiring of the supplemental list as presented. All in favor aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried seven zero. Other business. Yeah, second. Um uh, approve the resignation of Carol Felton. Is it elementary? Need a motion for that? Mr. President, yes. I approve the resignation of Carol Felton as teacher's aide. Second. Move and seconded to accept the resignation <laughs> of Carol Felton. Thank you. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay? Motion carried, 7 0. Any other business to come before the board? Um, negotiations. Um, probably need just a few minutes to discuss that. Uh, maybe ten minutes. Ten minutes. We'll let everybody else get out of here if you want to. With just the board and yourself. Yep. Yeah. Ten minutes is ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> 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 motion to accept the session for ten minutes. No, 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 no. Negotiations. I still move to go and check the motion for ten minutes. Discuss negotiations with the board and Mr. Meyer. Second. Second is to the next session for minutes. Mr. Meyer and the board to discuss negotiations. All in favor, aye. 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 Aye.